Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a book fold template in Photoshop. Before we get started with actually creating our template, let's look and see what book folding is all about. So we're just all on the same page here. Sorry for the pun. I just went and looked up book folding on Pinterest and these are folded books. What people are doing is folding books into these shapes. And what I'm going to help you with is how you can create the template that you need to be able to fold a book. So if you're interested in book folding, there are lots of videos on actually how to do it. But what I'm going to do is to show you how you can create these templates. So let's get started. So this is the kind of book fold template that we're going to create. Now I'm going to show you two possible templates. One of them is this one which is stretched out where you're going to fold every second sheet and you want it to be sort of double the width so that when it's folded up it's going to look correct. And if you want a more regular sort of template then you're going to see how to do this. So the, the difference between the two is really minimal and so I'm going to show you that. I'm also going to show you how you can get the text numbers to appear. I'm going to show you a really good font to use, where to download it free, how to install it, how to use it, and then how to create these book fold templates yourself so that you're sort of free now to perhaps use text or any shape that you can create or find and use that as a book fold template in future. So let's get started. To get started, I've just created a brand new Photoshop document using File and then New. And mine is 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels. So I'm going to fill it with white. Uh, I could have done that as I create it, but I'm going to press Control Backspace to fill it with the current background color. Now before I get started with the actual shape that I'm going to be working with, I need a pattern that I'm going to use for the lines. So I'm going to create a second document. I'm going to choose File and then New. And this time I'm going to do a document that is 40 by 40 pixels in size, quite small. I'm going to make the background white on this one just for speed and click OK. So this is our tiny document here. So I'm just going to enlarge it. And what I'm going to do is go and grab the rectangle marquee tool here and I'm going to drag over half of this document. I'm just going to drag over the image here and I'm looking for this guide that's telling me I've got half of my shape. So I'm down the center guide now and I'm just going to Alt Backspace or Option Delete to fill this side with black. So we've got an image which is half black and half white. I'm going to choose Select All. And I'm going to choose Edit and then Define Pattern. And this is going to be the pattern for the lines in our image. So I'm just going to call this Book Fold Lines. And click OK. Now I'm making note in my head that each of these lines, the black line and the white line, are each 20 pixels wide because the original image was 40 pixels. Now I'm done with that image so I can just close it. And I don't need to save it either. So now we're back to our starting image and we're ready to go and get the shape. Now I'm going to use a fleur-de-lis shape. So I'm going to click here on the custom shape tool which shares a toolbar position with the rectangle tool and a number of other tools. But I'm going to use custom shape. And I'm going to choose just a very simple shape. So I'm going to choose my heart shape. But you could choose any shape that you like. It's just that the more complex shapes are just going to result in a more complex pattern. So I'm just going to choose heart. And I'm going to make sure that I'm drawing it as a shape. And I want to set a fill and no strokes. I'm just going to set my fill to sort of a blue color. And I'm going to draw out my heart. Now I'm going to just click and drag it. But before I let go of the left mouse button, I'm going to hold the space bar so I can sort of center it up. And I can also hold the shift key to make sure that it's constrained to the original heart shape if that's important to me. If it's not, I can just draw it at any shape that I like. But I'm actually going to use the original heart shape, so I'm holding the shift key. And only when I've got everything right am I going to let go of the left mouse button and then let go of all the other buttons. So we now have our heart shape. I'm actually thinking that I'm going to move it down just a little bit further here. Now let's go and get our pattern. So I'm going to add a new layer to this document. I'm going to choose Layer, New Fill Layer, and then Pattern. I'm going to click OK. And what I want to do is to fill this heart shape with my pattern. 
Now we started off with an image that was 2000 pixels wide and we've got a pattern that's 40 pixels wide. So each black one is 20 pixels, each white one is 20 pixels. So we're going to do a small amount of math here. So here's the math that we're going to use. We're going to take the 2000 pixels wide that our image is and we're going to divide by 40. And that's going to give us 50 as a result. So that's telling me that I'm going to have 50 black lines and 50 white lines across my image. Now if I'm only going to fold the black lines, then that's going to give me 50 folding pages. That's the equivalent of a 100 page book because each page has two sides. So let's say that you have a 200 page book, then you've got 100 foldable pages. This image as we're going at the moment is only going to make us 50 fold pages. So I'm going to scale this down to 50%. I'm going to make it half as big as it is. And that's going to end up giving me 100 folds. And so you need to do some quick mathematics at this stage and just determine when you look at your book exactly how many folds you're going to want to make and then make sure that your pattern piece is going to be easily adequate for it. Now my heart actually didn't extend to the full size of this image so this is going to end up actually being a little bit less than 100 pages. But we could size up the heart to make up the difference. So I'm just going to show you the kind of things and kind of choices that you can make at this point. But I am going to scale this pattern down to 50% because I do want this to be a sizable fold. So the mathematics, again, we've got a 2000 pixel wide image. Our pattern is 40 pixels wide. So when we divide 2000 by 40, we end up with 50. That tells us that we've got 50 black lines and 50 white lines. That's not enough. If we want 100, we want double the number of fold lines, then we're going to have to halve our pattern. If we want three times the number of fold lines, then we're going to have to reduce our pattern to say 33%. Right now I'm going to settle for 50 and just click OK. So this is now my pattern fill layer and these are my lines. I'm just going to turn that off for a minute. Let's go back to our heart. And as I said, this area here and this area here right now are not going to be fold lines. And if that concerns me, I'm just going to make this bigger. So I'm going to hold the Shift key and I'm just going to hit the corners handles here and let's make my image big enough that it's going to go from edge to edge and this is going to give me my 100 fold lines. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to click OK. And now I want my lines to be over my heart and we can do that very easily with what's called a clipping group. So I've got my pattern layer on top, my filled heart underneath. I'm going to select my pattern layer and I'm going to choose layer, create clipping mask. And that just clips the pattern layer to the shape of the heart layer. So there effectively is the folds that we need to do. But if you are used to doing book folds, you'll know that you really want these lines to be numbered. So we're going to look next at how we can quickly and easily number these lines. So the issue with numbering our lines is that we want whatever we're going to do to be quick and easy. And it would be really nice if we could perhaps save what we've done so that we could use it later on. Well, I'm going to show you how to do all of those things. But first, let's talk about the actual font that we're going to use. Every one of these lines is a fixed distance from every other line. And if we use a regular font, you'll find that the spacing and the actual physical size of the letters or the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, is different for each of those characters. And that's going to really bite us here. We can't have that happening. So what we want is a special kind of font that's called a monospaced font. And this means that the spacing between each of the numbers is going to be exactly the same and also that each of the numbers is going to be the same physical size as every other number. So a skinny one is going to be exactly the same size and take up the same space as say the number 8 or the number 0. So that's critical. The other thing is that these fonts are going to be shown at a very small size. So we need them to be legible. So we can't be going using script fonts and stuff like that. We need something that really makes sense. And it would be really nice if it was free and if it were legal to be used. So what I've done is I've found a font for you. So what you'll need to do is go to 1001 free fonts and look up this font called Droid Sans Mono. 
And Droid Sans Mono is a programmer's font. It was designed to be seen and legible at small sizes. So that ticks one of our boxes. It's a mono font. So that means that each of these characters takes up the exact same amount of space as every other character. Again, that ticks a box for us. So it's legible at really small sizes. It's a mono spaced font. It's also public domain. It's free and legal to download. So you're just going to click to download it. And when you download it, I've already done that a couple of times, so it's probably, yep, it's going to download again for me. What you'll do is you'll just double click to open it in something. Yep, okay, it's over here somewhere. Ah, here we are. It's open in my downloads folder. I'm just going to double click the font itself. And this is what the font looks like, and you're just going to click to install. And as soon as you install it, it's now available inside Photoshop. So I have the font Droid Sans Mono. Here it is here. Now I've done a bit of experimenting with this font, and I know that it has to be 17 points to work with this line spacing. So if you're doing 20 point black line, a 20 point white line, then a 17 point font size on Droid Sans Mono is going to be perfect. So they're the mathematics of it. Okay, so we've got a white font color, which is exactly what we want. We've got our text tool selected. Just going to click here and I'm just going to start numbering. So I'm going to type the number one and then I'm going to type a space because I don't want to number the white lines. If you want to number the white lines, then you're going to just type one, two, three, four, five, etc. If you're going to number just the black ones, every alternate one, then you're going to do one space, two space, all the way through to zero. So you're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And then you're going to start again with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you're going to do a space in between each number. Just don't do 10 or 20 because that's going to be a double size number. You just want to do a zero for those. So I'm going to number every second line and I'm going to do this all the way across with a number of space, a number of space. It's going to take a while, so I'm just going to turn the sound off and I'm just going to do it. Okay, so I've now finished this and we can just zoom in and have a look. And all I need to do, because we've got the font size correct and the spacing correct, is just line this up so that the numbers are over every single one of these stripes. We can just check it all the way across. And the sizing is perfect. So if you use the values that I've given you, everything's going to fit absolutely perfectly. Now, if you wanted to number white lines and black lines, then you're going to have a slight problem because you won't be able to see the white text over the white line. So I've just moved this over here so that you can see what the problem would be. The numbers are all there, but we can't see it because it's white on white. Well, if that's you, just go down here and instead of normal, select exclusion. And what exclusion does is it reverses this font. So any time that you've got white on white, it just makes it black on white. But you can see that when it's white on black, it just stays white on black. So this is going to be a line of text that regardless of where it happens to be over white or black, it's just going to be visible. So you don't have to double your lines or do anything fancy. All you do is set this exclusion mode and your font is going to be able to be seen really, really easy and it's just going to adjust. So that's an awesome little trick that I wanted to show you, particularly for those people who want to number not only the black lines, but also the white lines. So let's just zoom out. Now the reusable part about this is that this line can be dragged into another document. So anytime that you have created one of these patterns and if you want to go and get your numbering system, just open up this design here and just drag and drop this layer or copy this layer into your design. So you don't have to recreate it, it's already there for you. You could also develop a Photoshop action to do it. That would be easy too, but just think in terms of you're not going to have to retype this set of numbers every time if you don't want to. But even so, it's like it's a really small job to do and it really just does take a few seconds. So I'm just going to shrink this down. 
So this is our book pattern template. Now there are a few things to consider here and one of them is that for some people this template design might result in a too squashed up heart because you're only folding every black line, the entire heart might be too squashed up. Well a solution to this is to make your initial starting heart stretched out so that when it's folded, it's folded in a correct proportion. So I'm just going to turn my text off for a minute and I'm also going to turn my pattern layer off for a minute and we're going back to our heart layer. What I'm going to do with my heart layer is I'm just going to select it and I'm going to size it down. So that it is about half the size of this image. And then I'm going to do the unthinkable and I'm going to stretch it. So I'm just going to hold down the Alt key as I stretch this heart out. Now it's double the width that it would normally be, but if you're only folding every second line, then when you fold it, it's going to look like a regular shape heart. So if this is the way that you prefer to make your book fold templates, this is how to do it. Make your shape half the size of the sheet of paper and then go and grab the sides, hold the Alt or Option key as you do it to stretch it out. Now everything else is just going to fit perfectly because we've already got these things on layers and because they're independent of what's below, let's go back and turn on our pattern layer. Well there's the fill pattern and go and turn on our text layer, here's our filled text. Really probably the only thing that we're going to have to do is to bring our text layer just down a little bit so it's positioned a little bit better over these lines across the middle of the heart. And if we had a shape that had gaps in it, so if you're creating a more complex shape that has different fold lines, so it's got sort of things happening down here and things happening down here that are independent of the main object, then you can just duplicate this text line. So just grab it and drop it onto the new layer icon, make a second copy of it, drag it out of the way over the other area that you want to fold. And so that's going to be the same fold lines, the same numbered folds for this second and third area if you need them. So there are a lot of things here that you can do that's going to be flexible for how you like to create your book fold templates. But it certainly opens up a world of fold templates to you because you could create text, you can go and use Photoshop's own shapes, you can look for shapes on the internet and download them, install them into Photoshop and use them or you could perhaps use the pen tool or other tools here to create your own shapes and then recreate them as book fold templates. So I hope you enjoy your book folding experience and if you're looking for a simple and quick way to create your own custom book fold templates, this is how you can do it in Photoshop. I'm Helen Bradley, thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.